Square. There is no place for a square, my lord. Hey guys, my name's Doc Jade. Do you need to prove that size doesn't matter? Well, I've got the run for you. We're going to play on a ribbon world that's only nine tiles tall, which is the minimum required to beat the game. Let's get started. As per usual, let's start picking up rocket debris and chopping down some trees. Then we can start grabbing some more. Slight issue though, looks like we don't have any coal. So we'll have to fuel the miners with wood for now. A quick expedition east reveals some oil and a lake, but no coal. And to the west is some uranium, copper, stone, and another lake. So we don't have any coal and we're completely surrounded by water. This'll be fun. Landfill is a green science research, so we'll have to make 125 red science and 50 green science to unlock it. Red science isn't too bad, only takes about 10 minutes. And after another 10 minutes of crafting the ingredients for green science, let's go set up the lab. Green science is done. I'll start crafting it, then grab some stone for landfill. There we go. Let's start crossing the lake. Okay, looks like we've got stone, more stone, and finally, some coal. Let's keep heading east. Looks like we've got a stone heart and some biters. The biters are pretty far away, so we shouldn't have to worry about them too much. Now that we've got coal, I'll start scaling up production, run power back to the ore patches, and finally start researching automation. Next up is logistics. After grabbing some belts and starting steel, let's run a coal line back over here so I don't have to keep walking back and forth. Actually, we don't need steel quite yet. Let's switch to electronics. Our power production is in the way, but a quick redesign will fix that. Need more landfill. Electronics is done. Next up is fast inserters. There, now for steel. I finally set up some landfill production, and we're almost done with that coal belt. Steel is done. Next up is steel axe, then I'll set up some temporary green circuit production. Finally, let's throw some electric miners down. Then we can get started on copper, stone, and iron production. There we go. Now let's get started on the smelting arrays for iron, copper, and steel. Due to the limited room, we'll need to put underground belts between the furnaces if we want to get all of the ores through. And it sure does make these smelting arrays expensive. Power is dying. Let's go expand it. Hopefully that'll do the trick. And more coal mining, just in case. After waiting for some more underground belts, we can set up copper, then steel. Cool, I'll combine coal and stone onto one belt since we won't need too much of it from now on. Now let's make some science. I'll throw together a little setup for red and green. Since belts are already taking up almost half of the usable height, designs do need to be quite compact. But as a professional amateur spaghetti builder, it shouldn't be too hard. If anything, it's quite fun. There we go, some temporary red and green science. Steel Axe, next up is Automation 2. I'll start throwing down some radars so we can keep tabs on the whole base. Automation 2, next up is Engines. Actually, let's tear down the science and make some green circuits. It takes a bit of belt braiding to fit, but it's not too bad. After clearing some more room, let's put science back down. How about a second one? Oh, cliffs. No problem, let's just scoot it over a little bit. There's engines. Next up is fluid handling. Taking a quick look at the map, I don't think a pollution-induced biter attack is ever going to happen. But just to be safe, let's place a couple turrets. Might as well research walls, lamps, and military as well. After setting up the demilitarized zone, I'll research heavy armor, then steel furnaces. And finally, Logistics 2. I have a feeling those red underground belts will be very important later. Now let's make some steel furnaces to make bricks for steel furnaces to upgrade our existing non-steel furnaces to the steel furnaces. Then we can set up some serious green science production. Logistics 2. Next up is Railway. We won't make any trains, we just need the rails for purple science. A tad more finesse later, green science is done. 
Now for Red Science. There we go, Red Science. Although we could use some more iron plates. Railway, now for Tool Belt. We can't really improve the speed we mine iron at without some mixed ore shenanigans, so we'll just have to wait for mining productivity. Smelting is definitely going to be our bottleneck. Oh well, let's set up some labs. Tool belt, now for some lab research speed. We're going to hit this lake sooner rather than later, so we should probably get a head start on landfill. And let's do another level of lab speed. Since we're going to eventually hit water every time we expand east or west, might as well take out all of the biters to the east until we hit water. Lab research speed 2. Now for military 2, then oil processing and plastic. Power production ain't looking too hot, so I'll craft some more boilers while I take out the biters. Man, this research is fast. Next up is red circuits. Since it's harder to avoid acid with limited room, worms are extra dangerous on ribbon worlds, but this base wasn't too bad. And it looks like that's the only one that we need to take out. Let's head back. Red circuits, time for some mining productivity. Okay, let's expand power production. Easy peasy. There's mining productivity. Next up is modular armor. Now for modules, sulfur, blue science, batteries, speed modules, and then productivity modules. We've got a lack of red science due to a shortage of iron, but there's not much we can do about it till we make some plastic. Productivity modules. Next up is better power poles and concrete before I forget about it. Now for explosives and cliff explosives. And finally, efficiency modules, just in case I ever want to make Mark II power armor. Now I'll tear down the labs and we can start working on oil. Since I built all of the power production on top of the oil patch, we'll have to remove it. There we go. Now for the pump jacks. Then I'll set power back up a little further down. And there we go. Now I'll run the oil to the front of the base. Luckily I left some room in the smelting arrays for it, but getting it through the rest of the base is going to be a pain. There, that wasn't too bad. Now for the refineries. The standard refinery setup is 10 tiles tall, but with a slight modification we can make it fit in 9, although it is a bit wider now. Yellow underground belts don't quite reach, so it's time for some red ones. There we go, and I'll go grab some water so we can get advanced oil running as soon as possible. Man, underground pipes are expensive. I started researching circuit networks so I could control the refineries with circuits, but I ended up not using them. Now let's set up some temporary plastic production so we can handcraft enough blue science to research advanced oil processing. I'll also queue stack inserters. Time to make some temporary engine production, handcraft some red circuits, and switch to sulfur. Then I'll set the labs back up. Stack inserters, inserter capacity bonus 1 and 2, then advanced oil processing. Making the blue science is slow, but it only takes about 10 minutes. Now we can tear down the labs and switch the refineries over. Then I'll do some more belt braiding to make room for the chemical plants to crack the oils down. It's a little cramped trying to fit liquids into such a small space, but it's still pretty easy. Let's start working our way up to personal solar panels. We'll need them to power exoskeletons later. And there we go. Oil is done. And one more chemical plant. We'll need lube later, so might as well reserve a pipe for it now. Solar panels are done. Now for the personal ones. Since we needed water up top for the chemical plants, we ended up with two water pipes. So let's get rid of the lower one. There we go. Now we're using all nine lanes of space for belts and oils. Personal solar panels. Next up is personal batteries. To save some space, I'll combine copper and iron onto one belt, then we can finish moving the water pipe. Time for belt immunity. There we go. The water is moved. And there's belt immunity. Now it's time for plastic. Super easy. I'll put it on the top side of the belt for convenience. Now for red circuits. It ends up looking a bit wonky, but if it works, it works. Let's paste that a few times and then make cliff explosives in the gap.
I'll make some power armor for belt immunity, but it turns out I need personal batteries before I can use it. Building all of these belts is super iron heavy, so let's finally make some speed modules for the miners. That should help. Don't need coal anymore. Time to replace it with sulfur. Easy peasy. After moving all the belts forward, let's get started on blue science. We only need to make engines for it, so it's pretty easy. Now let's see how long it takes for me to realize that I forgot to put oils in the blueprint. Lots of building later, blue science is done. Let's set up some labs and start cranking out science. First up is mining productivity. And then we can start landfilling in the lake. We're going to need a lot more landfill. And there's also a biter nest over here with two worms. That'll be fun. Okay, slight detour for two levels of projectile damage. Here I almost died because my hotbars were switched. Weapon shooting speed 1 and 2 are next, then I'll set up some temporary ammo production. Okay, back to mining productivity. Can't do another level, so I'll research explosives damage, then substations. Now for lab research speed 3 and 4. Slowly but surely, I'll keep filling in the lake, then try taking out the biters again. Well, that didn't work. You've got to be kidding me. I hate combat. Lab speed 4. Now for lube. Finally! Lubricant is done. All of this walking back and forth is taking two halves of forever, so let's start working towards exoskeletons. Continuing west, there's a single worm with impeccable aim. But since he's quite far away, we can deal with him later. Electric engines. Next up is robotics. Now for construction robots, personal roboport, electric furnaces, purple science, blue circuits, and then I'll put some productivity modules in the labs. And then we'll do power armor, exoskeleton, low density structure, yellow science, speed module 2s, productivity module 2s, and inserter capacity bonus 3. And there it is. It only took me two and a half hours to remember. While I lay some pipe, let's get back to it. Efficiency module 2s, worker robot speed 1 and 2. Time for some more productivity, mostly in things that consume a lot of iron. Worker robot cargo size 1, and military science, although we can't really make any right now. More productivity, then I'll research laser, finish filling in the lake, personal battery mark 2, and night vision. At this point, I'm just researching stuff to put off having to build the next science. Eh, why not? Train stations and rail signals. Looks like we need more power. I'll start walking over while continuing to research useless crap. Gates, cars, accumulators, fluid wagons, and rocket fuel. Well, at least that one's actually useful. After finishing the additional power production, let's head back and tear down the labs. Okay, no more excuses. Time to start working on purple science. Purple science is a little trickier since none of its ingredients are on the bus, but still not too bad. After making sure the oil pipes are hooked up correctly, I'll paste and build it a few times. Then we can jump straight into yellow science. Never mind, we should probably put blue circuits on the bus. So, time for some sulfuric acid. Although we don't have enough iron plates to make any, which is pretty annoying. We should probably stockpile some light oil for rocket fuel later, so I'll turn off some of the chemical plants. After pulling sulfur off and reordering the belts, let's set up blue circuits. Super easy. This should definitely be enough. After throwing in some productivity modules, we can start working on low density structure. Ten assemblers should be enough. Since we're low on iron, might as well take advantage of this patch right here. Sweet. Now I can stockpile some belts before making yellow science. Oh, and some ammo. We still need to take out that worm. Oh, 
Well, I walked right into that. Literally. Using a turret as a distraction works pretty well, though. There we go. Hopefully there aren't any more. Looks like we're going to have to set up some military science. A couple levels of explosives damage should do the trick. While I waited, I finished the iron setup and then started recreating historical events with items on belts. Three levels should be enough. It's 2 a.m. and I want to go to bed, but I'll research another level of projectile damage tomorrow. In preparation for the rocket silo, I'll start making the productivity modules for the silo. Projectile damage is done. Let's tear down the military science and take out those worms. This time, I will take a more calm and calculated approach. I'll set up the labs again so we can crank out productivity 3, then I'll go piss off the biters. We're going to need a lot of landfill. Productivity 3, now for speed module 3s. The new Factorio patch added a command for enabling the research queue. Too bad I only get to use it for two sciences. Speaking of sciences, let's tear down the labs, bring the fluids up, fill in some more of the lake, and start working on yellow science. Just need to set up the flying robot frames. It's a lot of one-off parts, but it shouldn't be too bad. I made a working design, but I forgot to leave room for the belts. Let's try that again. Before I build it, I finally made myself a personal roboport to speed up the process. While we're at it, might as well make some better armor and an exoskeleton too. Looks like I forgot another belt. Glad I spotted it early. Okay, I think this should work. And I made the exact same mistake again. Are you kidding me? After some really wacky belt shenanigans, the new design is longer, but it should actually work this time. Man, these robots are nice. And there we go, yellow science. Now I'll plonk down a bunch of the labs, and we can get started on rocket control units. Actually, let's make sure to use productivity modules here. Rocket control units, now for the silo. Time to set up concrete. I'll just hand make the bricks for it. Then we can set up the rocket control units. Our bottleneck is purple science, and that's due to a lack of iron sticks. I'll go hand feed it some iron plates. Okay, now for rocket fuel. Super easy. Then I'll split off the low density structure and run it to the front. And there's the rocket silo. Let's craft that sucker. After chucking some productivity modules in, now we just need to wait. Yeah, it's pretty slow, but whatever. And there we go. Only took about an hour. Now let's throw a car into the cargo, then turn that cargo into a car gone. And there we go, just under 25 hours. I'd like to take a moment to thank my supporters on Kofi. Their support allows me to predict the future with 0% accuracy. And that's all for today. My name's Doc Jade. Bye-bye.